Hey, good morning. It's a Sunday morning uh, in July, and I'm thought I'd come out before church and uh, just uh, take a look at this project I'm doing. I just haven't had a lot of time to finish this, unfortunately. Doing my water line, trying to get everything just right. So I thought I'd just go through a few things on this in terms of lessons learned. Uh, first off, what I did is I initially set up these bifacial 450 watt panels over here to run a 500 watt pump. And what I found was the 45 volts coming off those 450 watt panels. Um, you know, even if I ran a, I had four actually running in parallel and it just wasn't enough. And the reason it wasn't enough is I'm pulling 220 feet ahead. And there's about 0.433 PSI per vertical foot that you're pushing against. So you figure a couple hundred feet, that's, you know, 86 PSI you're pushing against. And the half in, half horsepower, 500 watt pump. Look, it, it's not a bad pump. It's a, I, I bought a two horse. I'll go into more details in terms of what that is, but just thought I'd show this to you really quick because it's a really good lessons learned. Uh, I figured I had more than enough power because the pump was rated between 30 and 50 volts. So I figured at 45 volts with, you know, one, two, three, four in parallel, uh, 450 watts a piece wouldn't be a problem at all to push it. And what I discovered was the 45 volts, even though it's rated for 48, 50 volts, it just wasn't enough to push that 90 PSI, you know, get any kind of flow. This particular two horse, this TU horse pump, it's rated, uh, I think it's two, two and a half GPM at about 250 feet ahead. Uh, that's max. And here's a couple interesting lessons learned. First off, the controller over here is rated for 48 volts and 500 watts. The open circuit voltage that it's rated for is 100, is 100 volts DC. So when you have a 48 or 50, let's say a 50 volt um, system, 50 volt pump, 50 volt controller, you can get away with going to 150% of the rated voltage. So I took advantage of that and I added these four 290 watt panels over here. Now they're not bifacials, they're cheap. Paid 80 bucks a piece for each of the panels. And I ran them, uh, two of them in series, and then I connected um, you know, the two in series. Now the benefit of that was these 290 watt panels, they're 36 volts a piece. So by running them in series, I get 72 volts open circuit. And when I connect them to a load, it drops down to about 62 uh, volts. And that's that runs my pump just fine. So I'm still within that 150% range, under, underneath 150% of the rated voltage. Uh, it can handle it. Um, there's actually in the controller, the two-horse controller, there's a knob that allows me to adjust the, um, you know, the power going to the pump. So I can, you know, I can modify it if I think it's too much. And one thing I noticed that I'm concerned about, so it's July now, and I'm getting two and a half GPM right now with two, about 220 feet ahead, 210 feet ahead. But I'm worried about the winter. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and add two more panels on a switch. I don't wanna put too much wattage on there. I'm just a little concerned about the peak of the summer, but if I have a little toggle switch that in the winter time I can hit, it'll up, up, bump up my overall wattage you know, like at the winter solstice when the sun's at like 23 degrees uh, over the horizon, um, that might get me enough water to, to, you know, be able to get into my tank. So let me just show you how the system works. I'm still fiddling with it. But what I did is I ran the type A PEX coming out of the wellhead there. So I have not hooked up my pitless adapter yet. I'll do that. I'm just kind of, you know, the well's been sitting for a while. I wanted to clean it out. I wanted to be able to monitor how this tube works. So... I ran one and a half inch line. Now the reason I did that on the ground was just for maximum flexibility. If I ever wanted to get away from the, the DC solar pump, I can, um, you know, minimal, I'm off grid. So I want to oversize my lines if I'm depending on inverted power. In this case, the three quarters fine with the solar pump because of the low GPM. But if I ever wanted to expand uh, by bearing a one and a half inch line, I'm good. How this works is pretty slick. And what you have is that one and a half inch line that's going to end up going um, this side of the pitless adapter. You know, I'm down six feet, five, five to six feet. And I come over, um, you know, and I go ahead and go in the house. I went ahead and just replaced the line. It was originally on a, 
on a one inch um, galvanized uh, pipe. But, you know, I wanted to get rid of that. It's been really, it's been sitting for a little while. I figured if I'm going to run some power, had to rerun power anyway, I might as well just run new pipe. And that one and a half inch um, poly, it has a rating of 250 PSI. So it's, it's really strong. Anyway, ran that under there. And what I did is I buried the cistern here. So the cistern's small. It's only 525 gallons. Just try it out. If, if I need to add some more volume, I can do it later. But the thought is... The solar pump's going to add to that about, you know, 2 GPM for 6 hours a day, let's say in the winter. Even 1 GPM for 6 hours a day. Um, cloudy days I'm going to have some issues with. Running about 50 gallons a day per person. So I figured a 500-gallon tank would get me by in the winter just fine, for my needs anyway. So I'm going to do some stuff here. I'll show later in subsequent videos, but I'll have a vent on this. I'm actually going to outflow that water and, and make a water feature here. should be pretty cool with the solar system. But um, that's just a general overview of uh, how this is going to work. The objective is simple. By using the solar-powered pump, I don't have to rely on inverted power, and I don't have to rely on battery backup. Well, those are fixed features for an overall off-grid power system. So it minimizes those power expenses. And then how do you pressurize your system? Well, that's, that's not too hard either. I do use inverted power for a half-horsepower pump, a lift pump, a, you know, a suction pump that's going to pull up about five feet ahead. And that'll pressurize my system, run at about 30 PSI to minimize my overall power consumption. And that way my overall power needs from inverted power and battery backup is minimal and consequently my overall carbon footprint is re significantly reduced so i think it's kind of a smart setup i'll show you how this progresses um haven't had a lot of time to work on it but hopefully i could get this done pretty quick hey thanks for watching this uh, short video you have a good one